I'm Howard Tiersky, CEO and founder of From, the Digital Transformation Agency. Last week at the FEI conference in Boston, I spoke about the five challenges that large enterprises face when embarking on digital transformation initiatives. FEI has asked me to work on this video series for you with each video covering one of the five challenges. And today, we're going to talk about challenge number four, which is the lack of agility. Now, why do we need so much agility for digital transformation? The reason is because of the speed of digital. Digital moves fast. Technology is changing rapidly. Customer expectations are changing rapidly. Competitors are moving rapidly. Startups and tech companies are going after your customers. You have to be able to come up with ideas, test them quickly in the market, make quick decisions about what you're going to pursue, what you're not going to pursue, how you're going to change, and how you're going to evolve. In fact, the kind of speed you need looks a little bit less like this picture and a little bit more like this picture. Remember this movie? where in the Matrix, the bullets are flying past Keanu Reeves, and I'm not going to actually demonstrate this, but he's able to move very quickly, sensing which threat is in which direction and how he needs to move to be able to successfully avoid it and be successful. That's the kind of agility that we need in the digital arena. And it's the kind of agility that most startups have, but many enterprises don't. So, Let's think about the ways you can improve agility. And I'm going to talk about five specific types of agility that are really important for success in digital and digital transformation. And a little bit about some of the things you can do within the context of being a large enterprise to try to improve each of those types of agility. The first type of agility is the agility of sensing. What do we mean? Well, imagine that Matrix movie. The first thing you have to be able to do is not to move but to know what's going on around you, to be able to be alert and aware of all the things that might require some action on your part. So actually, think about four major categories. We produced a great video on trends and uh, 10 or 12 different categories of trends that you might want to keep on top of. But at a higher level, here's four key things to be thinking about making sure that you're paying attention to. First of all, your customers. Ultimately, it's their behavior that's going to drive your success. What's their behavior like on your websites, on your mobile applications, in your stores, and the other channels in which you interact with them? Be constantly measuring and watching their behavior. And agility in this area means, you know, most enterprises are collecting lots of data. But the question isn't just, you know, the, how quickly are you collecting data, but how nimble and agile are you to analyze that data and understand what it means so that you can take it you know, you can determine what action to take as a result of that. In addition to your own behavioral metrics, how else are you studying your customer? Are you measuring their ongoing satisfaction? Are you surveying them? Are you conducting usability tests? Are you using data that may be available on um, third-party research that shows technographic trends, behavioral trends, psychographic trends? There's many sources of information to help you understand your customer segments and how they may be changing. Secondly, technology. Technology is changing at a rate like never before. Whether it's wearable technology, big data technology, virtual reality technology, there are uh, beacons and other uh, network technologies that are allowing us to sense where customers are with more accuracy than ever before. There are so many technologies that have the potential at the right point in time and at the right point of maturity to enable you to create some kind of new value for your customer. You need to be paying attention and sensing these changes in the technology landscape and quickly figuring out when they've reached a point where you can do something about them because to the degree that you don't or you don't move quickly, you can expect your competitors, whether they're traditional competitors, technology companies, startups, to be doing that. And in fact, the next category are your competitors. To be sensing what are your competitors doing? How are they changing their product mix? How are they changing their pricing? How are they changing their customer service? Where are they falling down and failing to deliver successfully to the people who are their customers and might potentially be your customers? And how are they communicating and how are they trying to woo your customers over to their side? Being constantly aware of that kind of competitive research is the third category. And the fourth category is regulatory. Especially if you're in a regulated industry, and most industries are subject to some level of regulation, as those things change over time, they create new opportunities. That's a fourth category we need to be paying attention to. Now, that's a lot to pay attention to. 
how do you effectively put sensing programs like this in place? The first thing is to remember, like I said earlier, that gathering information is not sufficient. Someone in a cubicle somewhere who's paying attention to these things is not sufficient. You need to be gathering the information, number one. You need to be developing actionable insights from it is number two. And you need to be socializing and sharing that information, number three. And you know, frankly, when you start to break that down, it's not a big mystery on how to achieve it. The main thing you need are resources that are dedicated to these activities to recognize that a part of success in digital is to be constantly sensing and you need people with the right skills, the right research skills, the right analysis skills, and then you need a culture where that information is being communicated and disseminated on an ongoing basis where pe people are really uh, voraciously consuming it and using it uh, in an actionable way as they develop products and services and improve the uh, digital experience of the customer. So the second category of agility that enterprises must have to be successful and compete is agility of technology. So the first, if you recall, was the agility of sensing. Now as we start to want to respond, the primary tool of the digital world is the tool of technology. Do those tools that we have at our disposal in our enterprise allow us to move quickly from idea to something the customer is experiencing? Most large enterprises would say that's not their experience. Many large enterprises struggle with technology stacks that may have been created in an era before we had these needs for this level of agility that may have been conceived of with a certain kind of transactional process in mind that either is no longer applicable or reflects only one of many, many different uh, types of transactional processes that you need to be able to support. And that means, frankly, that a lot of technology that's aging needs to be replaced or needs wrappers placed around it so that it can gain the level of agility necessary. So let's talk about three specific things you can do to try to work between your business and IT departments to see how you need to move forward the technology that you have supporting digital. The first, I just call requirements. And what do I mean by that? I think in the old days, what would happen with requirements is we would on the business side, define the requirements that we needed for a particular project, particular channel, and IT would build them for us, hopefully successfully. But the problem with that is then that what gets built is what's needed at that moment. Right now, we need to be able to change, evolve, and adapt so quickly that it's too slow of a process where if every time we realize what we need, we have to go back through a whole uh, time-consuming IT build. So I would suggest to you to think about requirements not just in the context of what you need today, but to really ask the broader question, what are our requirements for technology agility? And make sure that those are being communicated. Because after all, technology, uh, the, the IT departments and those responsible for implementing technology, they need to understand what has to be able to be flexible. You can't make absolutely everything flexible. So there needs to be that kind of dialogue and requirements around these are the things that we need to be able to change on an ongoing basis. Secondly, software as a service platforms are a huge friend to all of us trying to make technology more agile. Why? Because in the old days when we would buy a software product, maybe a major piece of enterprise software, we'd implement the hardware for it. It would be a year or two years to implement it. We'd have to massively customize it. It would be very expensive software to buy, very expensive software to implement and customize. And then if you want to make a change, ugh, you're talking about abandoning major, major investments. In the SaaS world now, we can have so much more flexibility by creating an integration layer around our most core systems and data, and then plugging in different types of tools, whether they're shopping cart tools, whether they're CRM tools, whether they're data mining tools, whether they're particular tools that operate within our digital experience, mobile, mobile capabilities that we add into our apps, things like that. So as we build out our capabilities using these types of platforms, they're much more rapid to swap out and change. Plus, with most of these SaaS platforms, we don't have the same kind of issues of versions. It used to be, oh, if you're on this version of SAP and you wanted to go to that version of SAP, you're talking about a major upgrade headache. Whereas with many, if you look at something like Salesforce, you, that product is just being constantly evolved and improved. Everyone is always on the most recent version of Salesforce, and you have a huge ecosystem of plugins and other code that's designed to work with anyone's implementation. And that's just one example of a SaaS platform that gives you an enormous amount of agility and flexibility. 
So think about trying to move yourself to SaaS platforms wherever possible. And lastly, abstraction. You want to put in the hands of the product development team, of the product owners, of the content creators, of the marketers, the ability to tweak and adjust the digital experience as much as possible, as rapidly as possible. And what that means is that we want to try to abstract capabilities up from the level of code. So for example, and really there's three main areas that I would focus on today. First is around content management. You certainly want to make sure that you can publish and edit content without needing to go through IT. Now that may sound so obvious and, you know, frankly kind of 1999, and yet I constantly see large enterprises where key parts of their content ecosystem are not accessible to be modified from a business perspective and require IT involvement. So that's one thing that you have to totally deal with. The second is around your presentation layer. So it's one thing to edit the content, but what if you want to change the layout? What if you want to change the series of steps that someone has to go through? Making those capabilities accessible to business users to modify them is possible with today's experience management tools. We do a lot of work in implementing these kinds of tools to make sure that the business has at their fingertips the ability to make changes in the experience without needing to go back to IT, at least for many of the types of things they're going to want to change frequently. Um, the third, so I mentioned CMS presentation layer, the third type of capability you really want to abstract it, and this is something we see less commonly but is so helpful, is business rules. Implementing a business rules engine as part of your technology stack so that as you decide to make changes, whether it's pricing changes, policy changes, um, logic changes to the way things operate, that those are not primarily in code that has to be changed by a developer, which then has to be regression tested, but rather are in business rules engines. So they can be changed more or less the same way content is changed by a, a, a business user that has the appropriate entitlements. The third category of agility that we need is agility of decision making. If you're in a large enterprise, I'm guessing that you've had the experience of trying to move digital efforts forward only to be faced by a multi-month, if not multi-quarter, capital budget approval process that requires endless spreadsheets and forecasts and, uh, and frankly, many, many meetings and long periods of time to make a decision. Now, on the one hand, these things exist for good reason. When companies are going to spend millions of dollars of capital investment, they want to make sure that those decisions are being made well, and they want to make sure that all the right people are involved and informed and get to weigh in. They want to spend their money carefully. This makes sense, but in the digital world, it doesn't work. The speed of decision making from the old sort of pre-digital world kills our efforts in the digital arena because we have to move too quickly. So you need to come up with a faster way of getting those kinds of decisions made. I mean, the truth is that in the digital realm, you're better off fast than right. Because if you're fast but wrong but agile you, and sensing, you'll sense the wrongness of what you're doing and you'll make a shift. But if you're slow, forget it. I mean, you know, there's the famous quote, of course, from Wayne Gretzky, the way he, he wins at hockey is he doesn't skate where the puck is, he skates where the puck is going. Well, I mean, can you imagine if you see where the puck is going, but then you have to fill out a 25-tabbed Excel spreadsheet to su submit it to the capital approval process and wait months and months? I mean, you know, by then the, the game is over and everyone's gone home and the puck's been put back in the locker room. I mean, you just need to be able to move more quickly than that. What I suggest to solve this problem is make sure that you have really good alignment on the goals that you're trying to drive through digital. See, because so often these capital approval processes are about strategy and tactics. What are we going to do? What kind of tools are we going to put live? What technologies are we going to buy? What capabilities are we going to provide to our customers? That's the stuff that we have to be agile about. But we can agree at a you know, senior level with senior management on these are the things we're trying to drive through digital more brand awareness, lower cost to acquire, increased share of wallet, increased conversion on the website. Let's agree on the key business goals. And once we've done that, find people you trust to run digital, and you have to give them the money and the room to, to succeed and fail. And you know, I worked with one company once that made this shift. And because of these problems, it was a large energy company, 
and they made the decision to give the chief information officer and the chief marketing officer a substantial capital budget to drive digital rapidly with quarterly check-ins to report after the fact how they'd spent the money, not before, in order to get approval. That process was massively successful and resulted in huge increases in digital revenue, far eclipsing the investments that were being made. Unfortunately, after two years of success, another even larger energy company came in and bought this energy company and then said, well, that's not how we do it, dismantled the process, and unfortunately, the, the, the gains and growth uh, then uh, subsided. So, uh, but you have the opportunity to learn from that story and to make sure that within your organization, you try your best to get the level of autonomy and authority that the po folks on the ground doing these digital transformation projects need to be able to be successful. And that relates to our fourth category of agility, which is similar in a way. It's the agility around strategy shifts. So what do I mean by that? In a startup, first of all, 90% of startups fail. And those that succeed, they succeed not because their original idea, their original business model, their original concept was right. That's almost never the story. Facebook started out as a dating site. You know, we've talked about this before on another video. eBay started out as a Pez dispenser uh, collector's site. Um, Twitter, uh, or I should say um, Flickr, started out as an online role-playing game. These products changed and shifted their strategy many, many times, finding their way to success. In the enterprise, so often we judge projects on whether they achieve their original vision, whether they achieve their original goal, whether they hit their original budget, whether they achieve the ROI based on their original funding. This mindset is just not what works in the digital space. And you run the risk that teams start to see issues, problems, reasons why they might be better off shifting their strategy, but they don't do it because they're afraid of this. They're afraid someone's going to say to them, oh, OK. You've just found out the original idea that we funded is not going to work or not going to work the way you thought. Fine. Great. Kill the project. We'll take the money back. Oh, you have a different idea, something you want to do uh, that you think would be better? No problem. You can start at the beginning, get to the back of the line. You can begin the capital funding project again, and maybe in a year you can get some more money and try this new idea that you have. That's not how the companies that are successful at digital are operating. What you need to do is have a process that embraces and expects that whatever you're funding is going to go through a trial and error process, a success and failure process, to find its way to the kind of digital transformation that will really lead you to the massive success that you're seeking. You need to be able to support, you know, it, it, you, you can't expect Keanu Reeves to go into the room and in advance know where all the bullets are going to be. That's not how he avoids getting hit by a bullet. The way he does it is by sensing what's going on and moving where he needs to move at that moment in time. We need to give digital teams that level of flexibility and, frankly, reward them for making those kinds of shifts rather than judge or punish them. The last, the fifth area of agility that I would suggest you focus on is agility of teaming. You know, we get involved at From working with a lot of companies at what's the right, we get this question a lot, what's the right organizational model for digital? Should there be one central digital team? Should digital be part of all the different P&Ls? Should it be a blend, a combination? And listen, it's an important question, and it's something that we do a lot of consulting work around. But having said that, let me kind of disavow you of, of a certain myth. And it's the myth that somehow that there's a structure whereby all the digital work can be kind of done by one aligned team, one, truly one single team of people operating under one executive. It's impossible because digital efforts cut across every part of the organization. And when you want to move quickly and make a change or bring something new to market, and you need IT, and you need marketing, and you need R&D, and you need customer support, and you need engineering, and you need manufacturing, or whatever the other key silos within your organization are, listen, you're going to have silos. You can structure the silos in different ways. You can make them by the phase of the customer life cycle. You can make them by customer segment. You can make them by geography. But you're going to have them if you're a large enterprise. So the key isn't to try to figure out how to get rid of them. That's, I think, impossible. It's to figure out how to create a culture where your teaming across those silos happens rapidly, where there's mobilization of the people that are needed and alignment. And we do a lot of work within our organization 
on what's necessary in order to get that kind of alignment, whether those are workshops or aligning people's goals or uh, just a culture of innovation that gets people to function in the way that we need them to so they can swarm quickly around an opportunity rather than focus on the friction that might exist between different parts of an organization. So our five areas of agility that are essential and that enterprises struggle with, but hopefully today we've given you at least a few tips on how you might overcome some of those struggles. Again, they are the agility of sensing, being constantly aware and gathering information and analyzing information around the key things that are most important that are going to drive action and behavior around digital. Second is technology, because that's the fundamental tool that we use to deliver digital experiences and to be aware of how technology is shifting so that you can take action on new technology opportunities before your competitors do. Third is agility of decision making and agility of strategy. I kind of lump those together and say, we need the ability to empower and fund those people who we trust to run these digital initiatives to move quickly, make changes quickly, and do what they need to do based on what they see on the ground floor. And frankly, let the senior executives know about it after the fact. If they do a great job, then you succeeded. And if they don't do a great job, well, you know what? Then you hold them accountable. But you need to let them move quickly. And lastly, the agility of teaming. So people from around your organization are incented and trained to work together quickly to get things done. I hope you benefited from this video. If so, reach out to me by email. I'd love to hear your feedback and comments. You can reach me at Howard or FEI at from.digital. Also, let us know if you'd like to be on our mailing list, and we can send you, uh, you know, emails with regard to uh, new videos or other thought leadership. Or also, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter, where the same stuff goes out, at at Tiersky. So thanks so much. Hopefully this was useful around the topic of digital agility. This is the fourth in our video series. Feel free, if you haven't seen them, to watch the first three videos and look for the fifth video coming out shortly.